Here's our third video to get you ready for the quiz over 5.1 to 5.2. This is all about integration. Any type of integration that either results in a natural log or involves a natural log is what you're going to see here. And what I tried to do with the problems I selected is cover a little bit of everything. So when you take your quiz, at least you've seen something like it, not only in class and on the homework, but while you're watching this video. So we're going to start from the first one. First one, whenever you see that it has a fraction, you want to think about the denominator being the u, especially when you notice that nothing's really being done to the denominator. If you think about natural log integration, just to kind of have a little summary up top, if it is in the form du over u, then we know it integrates as the natural log of u. So my goal is to look for it to be in that form. It won't always be perfect. There are some exceptions, and we'll definitely cover those as we go through here. So this one, if we let u be 7x minus 5, du is 7. One thing you might do, just to kind of make it a little easier, is you can pull this 3 out front, and then you can divide by 7 and have a 1 7th adjustment. So you have a 3 that you pulled out front, a 1 7th adjustment, or you can right away just say that that means you get 3 7ths. And when you integrate it, you are getting the form du over u. So you get the natural log of 7x minus 5 plus c. So this is one of the most basic examples, other than the fact that you have to do an adjustment. Nothing really special or difficult about this particular problem. Second one, what makes it different, it is a trig-based problem. We have multiple trig functions. We have to decide what we want the u to be and what we want to the du to be. I believe we did one like this in class. We're going to let u be the tangent piece. And the reason we're going to let you be the tangent piece is because the derivative of tangent is secant squared, which you have in the problem. And it is 2 secant squared 2x. So you'll notice that we do have a 1 half adjustment. So I have a 1 half out front. As far as the form it's in, it is in a du over u form, so it's a perfect natural log form. My answer is 1 half the natural log of the tangent of 2x plus c. Not a difficult problem. Probably the most uh, often forgotten piece in this would be the adjustment piece. A lot of times when you're working with trig, it's easy to forget the adjustment. The next one is a little bit different. This comes from the very last day of notes in this particular topic. This is one of our single trig integrals. We had our list. We talked about the ones we already know. We already know sine and cosine. We talked about tangent. We talked about cotangent and how we could work with sines and cosines with that. This is one of the ones that truly you just have to memorize. You're going to let your u be the angle. So u is 5x. The derivative of 5x is 5. So you do have a 1 -fifth adjustment. This is a secant u. And again, this is one that you just need to have that list there and kind of go through and practice it a few times. The integral of secant is the natural log of secant plus tangent. So we get 1 -fifth the natural log of secant 5x plus tangent 5x. Make sure the angle stays 5x plus c. Not a very common one, and, and there also is the one for cosecant. I tell you, cosecant does not show up very often in any type of format. Secant shows up every now and then, which is why I wanted to make sure that this was the one I did with you here. The next problem, we have three more. We're going to look at a couple that actually involve natural law. We discussed that on the last day of the lesson, and then we're going to finish with a definite integral that represents area. So when you're looking at the first two problems in here, what is special about them is within the integral you have a natural log. That's different than the ones we just did where you end up getting a natural log. Whenever you have a natural log in your integral, it has to be u no matter what. There is absolutely no exception to this rule which is surprising. There's almost always exceptions for things. But it makes it easier for you. As soon as you see natural log, immediately you want to write down that u equals the natural log. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, which you have. Here's your 1 over x. So now you have to figure out what form this is in. The u is on the bottom, so this is a du over u, which gives you an integral of the natural log of u. If you look back and see what u was, it also was the natural log. So my answer is actually an embedded natural log. It's the natural log of the natural log, oh, I guess I should have put an x there, sorry, of x plus c. So we get an embedded log answer. And if you actually went took the time to derive it, you would get right where you started. So you could kind of see how that played off of what we did the lesson before in 5.1 when we were doing derivatives of embedded logs. It's a little different than the next one, which is why I like to show them side by side. Again, u has to be natural log 100% of the time. If there's a natural log in your integral, it must be the u. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, which again you have. 
This is a little different because if I say what's being done to you, this time it's not a du over u. That u is being square rooted. So this is actually a power rule. This is a u to the one half du. So you can see the difference if you look at them side by side. The first one we did, it just had u in the bottom, so it was the du over u. The second one had the u in the top, and it was under a radical. So the integral of u to the 1 half is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Putting u back in, your final answer is 2 thirds times the natural log of x to the 3 halves plus c. So you can see them side by side. Just because you have u that's natural log doesn't mean you're going to get another natural log. You just want to think about what's being done to the natural log piece. Last one I want to finish with is a definite integral. You're going to have a couple questions on your quiz that are going to have boundaries. Make sure you don't forget to put the boundaries in. It's nothing more than doing that last step with the fundamental theorem of calculus. This one's worded more as an area problem, so it's wanting to know the area under the curve of this function from 1 to 3. So I'm going to write my definite integral as the integral from 1 to 3 of x over 2x squared minus 1. If it just says write the definite integral, that's all you need to do. Now we're going to go through and integrate it. We're going to do a u sub and let u be the denominator. The derivative of 2x squared is 4x, so we are going to have a 1 fourth adjustment. The u is on the bottom, it is a du over u form, so the integral of this is the natural log of 2x squared minus 1. When you put your boundaries in, uh, I'm going to leave my answer in exact form, so I'm not going to reach for a calculator. If you want to give me a decimal answer, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to have 1 fourth, and then I'm just going to put brackets around it, the natural log of what I get when I plug 3 in. When I plug 3 in, I'm going to put it right here. Squared is 9 times 2 is 18 minus 1 is 17, so I get the natural log of 17. Minus the natural log, when I put 1 in, I get 2 minus 1, which is 1. However, the natural log of 1 is 0, so I'm going to cross that out, knowing that that is 0. So my final answer, if I want to leave it in exact form, is 1 fourth the natural log of 17. You could also write that as the natural log of the fourth root of 17, or 17 to the 1 fourth power. And if you really wanted a decimal answer because the answer was written in decimal format, you could plug it into your calculator and get the decimal equivalent. So this gives a great recap of everything you're expected to do on the quiz with integration. You will be doing some with boundaries. You will be doing some that have the embedded natural log, a good variety, a little bit of trig, so that you're ready for the quiz.